Stuka Joe here in time for another infamous unboxing video because unboxing videos are the beauty pageants of war games and this one is more infamous than the others because I'm uh, tempting it at 60 frames per second and the game to be unboxed Triumph of the Will by Compass Games published in 2017 designed by Ty Bomba and if you know Mr. Bomba he specializes in uh, what is called alternate history war games but if you ask him he'll say uh, that all war games are alternate history because if you play a war game and you obtain a result which uh, is different from the historical result hey you just altered the course of history now this particular game triumph of the will is the second type of uh, let's say uh, apocalyptic uh, post-World War II war game at the global scale that uh, Ty Bomba designed. He designed uh, a couple of decades ago a game called Tomorrow the World published by uh, XTR or Command Magazine. That was a, a big game. This one is supposed to be simpler but it's the same scale and it presupposes that uh, the Axis won World War II, that is uh, Germany, Italy, and Japan, and uh, the world stayed in peace for uh, a few years, but they couldn't help themselves, and they went at each other. And, and the uh, artwork here is very nice. You see this, this massive German tank, uh, explosions in the back. You see a view of my neighborhood here, well, I'm just kidding, you know, this this is much nicer than my neighborhood. I'm just kidding. Uh, you see the, all the devastation and destruction. And you have a futuristic Japanese jet plane overflying the German tank. So it is a very appropriate uh, piece of artwork for this type of game. Let's take a look at the back of the box. We have a uh, an illustration of the map. Now, the map in this game is actually two of full-sized maps that is two maps each one is um, 22 by uh, 33 I believe something like that and uh, see it's an oval shape map areas uh, dividing the world in areas and ocean zones we'll take a look at the map more closely this is a medium complexity game, 260 uh, counters, which are three-fourths of an inch, so they're nice and big. Solitaire suitability is high, even though it's a two-player game, and the unit scale, you have armies, fleets, and air forces. So uh, here are the artists, and uh, excuse, me, excuse me, I'm going to try my best. Wojciech Saluski and Rafal Saluski, and... Uh, uh, pardon my Puerto Rican Polish. I hope I'm somewhere in the ballpark. Designer and developer Ty Bomba. And you see here samples of the counters that you will find in the game. And of course, if it's a Ty Bomba game, you're going to find nukes. And I think the only game of his that doesn't have any nukes is his Antietam game. Uh, I'm kidding. I don't think he has an Antietam game. But if he did, it probably had nukes. I'm just kidding. We see here German units in gray, Japanese in red, and Italians in green. And uh, so this is the back of the box. If you want to take a look at what's inside the box, buy your own game. Or stick around because I will be opening this one right now. So, here we have the contents of the box, and we have 12 six-sided dice, six black and six white with rounded corners, so that they can roll a lot. We have a 2017 Compass Games catalog. And we have our rulebook here, full-color rulebook, non-glossy for those of you who are allergic to glossy-type rulebooks full color 
nicely illustrated you have here pictures of the counters you have there the United Nations rebellion markers there's only a few areas that are not under any of the uh, sides control like Mexico Panama northern and southern Andes we have control markers there the nukes and you have the uh, armies here the number on the counter is just the identification of the army. So this is the first infantry army for the Japanese. So the rules are case type. You see here the sequence of play. And uh, this is a game where both sides, even though they conquered the world, have scant resources. So you have to make the best of what you have. Various examples of play, well illustrated. The battles in this game are resolved on a combat display that is printed on the map. We'll have a chance to see that. And uh, the rules come up to 15 pages. Page 15, you have the designer notes, which go up to the last page of the rule book. Let's take a look at the counters. There's two counter sheets, three-fourths of an inch. And uh, thickness is adequate. So these are three-fourths of an inch, uh, larger than your usual half or five-eighths five -eighths of an inch counters. Here we have the infantry armies for the Japanese, the tank armies, the fleets, headquarter units, and we have air units, which are support units in this game, control markers. And here we have the same for the Germans, air support units, headquarters, fleets, uh, panzer armies. And you have the 6 SS army there, which apparently gets a plus one die roll for its elite status. And you have the German infantry armies, the backsides. Uh, denotes uh, that they are reduced and you have control markers so that's our first counter sheet here we have the uh, nukes and the United Nations uh, rebellion markers more nukes atomic blast markers control markers here we have the Italians they have nine armies in the game on the backs you see the nukes before exploding control markers, reduced Italian units. And uh, as I stated before, the game brings two map sections and uh, we will lay them here on our space and take a look at them. Let's pause the video for now. So here we see the full map from uh, the southern standpoint here. I'll try to uh, give me a line here, the overlapping. And uh, as you can see, it, it's, it's an area map. In the southern part of the map, you have German and Japanese production point tracks. So to construct your armies, you have to spend production points. And to, control them, to con construct the nukes also, here we have the total atomic detonations track. If it reaches a certain level, nuclear winter sets in and both players lose. And here we have the atomic attack table. So you roll 1d6, and uh, you only eliminate the target with a 1 to 4, which is not bad. But uh, a 6 is a dud. And here we have the nuclear winter table in the bottom. And depending on total detonations, the chance of nuclear winter increases proportionately. So a one through five will do it if there's 37 or more total det detonations. Let's take a look now at the unit cost table. Infantry armies, one production point. A-bombs, also one production point. Tank and panzer armies, two, as well as fleets and air force and headquarters. And there's a northwest and northeast passage table. You have to roll to see if your units pass and failed moves go back to the area from which they came from. Also, we have a phase now table. 
tell us in which particular phase of the turn we are. And now let's take a look at the specific areas on the map. Here we see that Africa is mostly controlled by the German slash Italians. All but two areas, Mozambique and Madagascar. And you know that the Italians, their uh, piece of the pie is just three areas, Europa del Sud, Medio Oriente, and Africa Orientale. You see that Germany has many areas, practically the rest of Europe. And going into uh, Russia, we see that Germany also has a piece of India called Azad Hind. And the Japanese have the rest of Russia, China, Indochina. The goal uh, of the game is for each side to capture the enemy's capital. So the Germans have to capture Japan, while the Japanese have to capture Greater Germany. And the Germans also have Iceland, Greenland, and crossing into uh, the Americas, Eastern America, Canada. The Japanese have Western America, the Yukon. Notice that Mexico and Panama are independent. And you see there the Panama Canal. And this game reminds me of a series that uh, you can see on um, Amazon, which is called The Man in, uh, what is it, The High Castle, which presupposes the same thing, that Germany and Japan won World War II and they're about to start World War III. You see here Southern America, basically in control of the Nazis, except for Northern and Southern Andes, which is independent, and the Japanese have Tierra del Fuego, but the Germans have German Antarctica. There is a Japanese Antarctica, which is more or less to the south of India. So here we see a Japanese Antarctica, and uh, looking here at the East Indian Ocean, the Japanese Empire stretches into Indonesia, Western and Eastern Australia, as well as New Zealand, which is spelled New Zealand. So the Japanese changed the name of that country, apparently, and uh, Polynesia. And uh, just wanted to say hello to uh, a good old friend from uh, New Zealand, Auckland, the man who goes by the uh, call name of Napoleon's Triumph. Uh, I love to see his unboxings and what he's playing. And we have here the polar ice area, no entry. So that's pretty clear. So that's the map in terms of zones, areas, we see the oceans, and uh, there's still more. Moving uh, to the northern part of the overall map, here we have the battle board. There's two rows. Front line, he replaced the units, the infantry armies, tank armies, and the air units are support units and they're placed behind. There are these massive areas here as holding boxes. This one's for the Germans. And this one is for the Japanese. So the map, even though it's two maps, there's a substantial degree of overlapping. So it's not a huge, huge uh, map as if placing both of them side by side or one on top of the other without overlapping. I haven't finished reading the rule book. I'm barely beginning. And uh, it, appear it appears from what I've read, this is a more playable version of uh, Tomorrow the World and it takes uh, less time to play too. Very nice looking map. So this is the unboxing of Triumph of the Will by Compass Games. This is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.